Hello all. My name is Kel, Lima Alpha 2, November, India. I'm glad to be able to contribute to the SDR Acam Academy in this way, but I really hope that we can be able to meet next year under normal conditions. I'm going to describe the new Andromeda, an integrated self-contained open HPSDR transceiver. It is based on an Anand 7000 DLE and have the following units taken from it. The Orion Mark II SDR board, the power amplifier filter board, 100 watt peak envelope power and, lo and low pass filter, bandpass filters for RX1 and bandpass filters for RX2. It contains also an Intel NUC mini PC, i5 or i7. An Arius ATU may be optional. It also contains the completely new front panel with 7 inch touch display with 1024 times 600 dot per inch. It controls practically all the functions of the radio by using cut commands, many of them new in TTIS. It looks like some of the other modern transceivers and the placement of the different controls are in my opinion very ergonomic. I'll come back with further description later. The story of this product goes back to late 2017 when I was contacted by Lawrence G8NJJ. He knew that I had, together with John G0ORX, constructed the PHP SDR controller some times before. He had been in contact with John after he saw an article where he described a way to use cut commands to control power SDR. He suggested that we should make an advanced cut controller using the same principle. So we started to develop the Odin cut console. It was finished in April 2018 and presented at Ham Radio in June 2018 in Friedrichshafen. I had for many years tried to get my ham friends in the local radio club Lima Alpha 3T to use my Anand 200D during the CQ Worldwide DX contest that we used to participate in, but they insisted in using an ordinary analog transceiver. But when I demonstrated the Odin cut console to them, they agreed to test it and were very satisfied with the use of it. Then we started to make a complete front panel with a 7-inch touchscreen for a self-contained SDR transceiver. When Apache Labs advertised the Anand 7000 DLE with an Intel NUC PC built into the radio, I suggested to Anand that we could make a version of it using my front panel. He agreed and the development of Andromeda started. But the main problem with the 7 inch touchscreen and Thetis is the very small push buttons. It is impossible to use your fingertips, so you must use a mouse. But when we discovered the collapsed mode of Tetis, and Lawrence suggested that he could modify Tetis to have eight large soft buttons along the edge of the display, everything was much easier. 
I'm going to describe some of the different buttons and menus later. The first model was working in May 19, but the first display was not good enough, so a new lab model was tested in August 19, and the first prototype in January 20. The work with the Arius ATU was done during the winter 19 to 20, and after a lot of modifications on the PCB construction and software, I installed and tested it in April. It works very good and tunes all antennas with up to 1 to 4 in SWR on most frequencies. 1 to 3 on 1.8 and 50 MHz. The encoders, there are six dual encoders with push buttons on the radio. RX1, AF and RF or AGC gain. RX2, AF and RF, a multi with drive and I have used the mic gain on the center knob. We have filter, high, low, cut, IF filter. We have diversity, gain and phase. And we have receiver incremental tuning. We also have the mic connector is an RJ45 uh, compatible with with Thetis um, microphones. Now with, with, with Yaesu microphones. Sorry, <laughs> it has uh, CW uh, key input. It has uh, headphone output and one USB connector on it. The push buttons. There are a lot of them, power on, uh, pure, uh, radio on, MOX, tune, pure signal on off, and a two-tone two test button. And we have the eight buttons along the lower edge, they duplicate the functions of the soft buttons on the display, but can be programmed just as you like. We have the C-Tune, uh, lock, VFO AB, uh, receiver incremental tuning or transmitter incremental tuning, selection of them. And we have a group of, of buttons here with dual functions. Direct function here is um, uh, data, mode data, mode plus, mode minus, filter plus, filter minus, and uh, AB, uh, BA, or split. And the three lower buttons are for you yourself to program. There is the the menu for programming of all controls on the front panel, so you can make your own radio. This is the first prototype of Andromeda made by Apache Labs in May this year. Seen from another angle. And we have the back panel with three antenna outputs, inputs, RX bypass uh, functioning as a pure signal input from an external power amplifier, external one transverter input and uh, ADC two input. You have uh, 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 two 
uh, speaker outputs, left and right. You have a bootloader switch, and you have six input outputs for different signals. And you have the open collector outputs for uh, controlling external low pass filter and so on. You have the Wi-Fi antenna connection. So you, you may use this for remote control of the station. Transverter output and the 10 megahertz reference signal input. And of course, power connection and out external fan connection. I am now going to describe the modified the modifications that Lawrence has done to Tetis. The user interface of Tetis is practically similar to Power SDR MRX PS. Both are based on the original Power SDR that has been available since before 2005 or so and have been used to control different SDR transceivers, Flex, First Series, Softrock and many others. It has been used on all the open HP SDR units since Mercury, Penelope and then Hermes and the later radios from Apache Lab. It works with Protocol 1 firmware on Ethernet up to 100 megabits and that is the main drawback. Protocol 2 was made av available a few years ago and then Tetis was written to be used on 1 gigabit. Tetis in full size has 106 push buttons and 11 sliding controls. On the 7 inch touch screen all the push buttons are too small to be used with the fingertips so it is necessary to use a mouse to clip on, click on. However, Tetis has a collapsed mode that comes up with a simpler screen with around 30 push buttons and a few sliding controls. But they have the same size as before so therefore Lawrence has constructed a new version of collapsed mode. By clicking on display control, you can select Andromeda button bar and you can select Andromeda top controls. Uh, the Andromeda button bar has eight push buttons and they are having size that can be used by the fingertip and by pushing the first button, quick menu, you can step through several different menus, selecting up to 64 different functions. Uh, uh, RX menu you get. VFO menu with band form and so on. You have a TX menu. You have a display menu and audio menu and a setup menu. And then you come back to quick button. Some of the buttons has direct selection such as RX1 noise reduction off Noise, uh, RX1 noise reduction 1 on and uh, noise reduction 2 on or you can select noise blanker off on and noise blanker 2 and the uh, spectrum noise blanker and so on uh, RX uh, automat automatic notch filter and so on other button brings up um, menus, for example, the band form where you get this one up. So you can direct select band. On the top of the display, with the extra indicators, 
You see lock, C tune, VFO sync, ATU tuned, and so on, in blue when activated. Noise reduction, noise blanker, spectral noise blanker, and others are uh, comes up in red when activated. If you use one of the encoders on the front panel, the to the right of the meter, the function comes up. You see it changes from which encoder you use. You, you get mic gain on one and drive here. And you have the diversity control. It comes up when you tune when you touch the uh, diversity control, you have the facing and the gain control of that. The ATU remember practically all the combination of frequencies and, train and the three antennas, normally with 10 kilohertz spacing. The memory function is fully automatic, so no need to use save. But in addition, I want to comment some more about the use of the built-in PC. <coughs> As it is either an i7 or i5 version of the Intel NUC mini PC, it is capable of running additional software such as log programs, DX spotting, antenna rotor controls, and uh, narrow band decoding programs w uh, by using an external monitor. Some of the pop-up windows, such as diversity facing control and setup up for Tetis, can stay there together with the other windows. During the CQ Worldwide DX contest, some of my friends even preferred to have Tetis also on the larger screen. But as you normally do not have to use the mouse on the collapsed Tetis screen, it is better to just use the touch screen. And during a contest, it is very seldom you need to use more than a few controls, such as frequency tuning, audio gain, HEC gain, band change, diversity facing for noise reduction, and IF filter shift width. They are all accessible from the Andromeda front panel or touchscreen, so no need to use a mouse at all to control the radio. By not using the mouse on the radio control, also the possibility to get problems with the keyboard when the mouse is active on the radio are avoided. I have encountered that even if all the keyboard functions are disabled in Tetis, some combinations of keyboard commands can start strange behaviors of Tetis, and that can be dangerous during a contest. Thank you all, and I really hope to meet some of you next year in Friedrichshafen. Goodbye.